real estate, stock market, US loan default. Now, all these have big things in common. And the one thing in common, the biggest one, is going to be every single one of those prices are going to drop like a rock, unemployment skyrockets, and we're going to be feeling a lot of pain. Now, chances are the U.S. is most likely not going to default on the loan, and it's due on June 1st. And the stock market is a little bit skittish right now, with a lot of people getting a little bit scared. But you do see the real estate market in several big U.S. cities taking a massive beating here. And I guarantee you, if the U.S. even has a whisper or rumor of a debt default, we are completely screwed. Now, here's the thing. Now, we don't really need to have a debt default to have a massive decrease in prices of stocks and property assets. All we really need is to have Biden delay the talks even more because apparently right now the talks aren't going so well. Nobody has reached a conclusion and there is no compromise. They still have a couple more weeks, but that's really all they have. And the closer you get to that June 1st date, and if you also delay even more, in the history of the U.S. economy, stocks and real estate generally fall a lot, sometimes even by double digits if things are not planning out. Now, at the very end of the day, they're going to pay it, okay? Like, the chances of a debt default is very low, but right now, if you look at the stock market and a lot of whispers, I'm not really so sure. So here you go. White House economists are claiming that 8 million jobs will be lost. And stocks will drop 45% if there is a default. Now, here's the thing. 8 million jobs is a lot of jobs, but it's not as much as you think. But this 45% drop in stocks is going to absolutely increase that unemployment rate even more than an extra 8 million people. Now, here's the thing. If you look at the unemployment right now, it's 3.4, 3.5, one of the best in decades. But there's one big thing that people are looking into. Higher paying jobs, like jobs that you kind of need, like more salary, like seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars. The ones you need to buy a home, they're very scarce. Whereas cheaper wages, like fifteen dollars an hour jobs, they're very numerous. And I'm gonna be real, guys. Fifteen dollars an hour is not gonna afford you a massive home. Okay, it's not even gonna afford you like a normal home worth like a quarter million to half a million dollars. You're gonna need higher paying jobs, but those are so incredibly rare. And that's what's going on, guys. And this is really, really freaking people out. This is why housing prices in a lot of cities in the US, it's dropping like a rock. And remember, if there's even whispers of a default, prices of a lot of stocks, assets are gonna tank. And even if they tank temporarily, it's gonna cause a massive pain in the market. Because this really boils down to what's happening in the small bank sector. Community banks are the backbone of the US economy. And it's actually insane to see that America has 4,000 banking institutions. And there's only about like 100 of them that are like mid-size and large size. Like we only really know like the top 15 biggest banks like PNC, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan Chase. But there's like 3,900 more small guys. And these are the guys who do regional investments. These are the guys giving out loans. A lot of the construction happening at my city are backed by small community banks. Very little of them are backed by big banks like JP Morgan or PNC. Most of these guys are going for very small regional banks that will give them better loans at lower interest and they're a lot more flexible. This is why community banks are the backbone of this economy. They're very important, but when you have something like this, combine it with already a few banks pretty much collapsing and the FDIC already spent like a fifth of their money paying people back from the bank defaults, I don't really think the FDIC can afford to see a few other banks go default. And I guarantee you, if they default on this loan on June 1st, there's going to be so much pain in the banking sector. The banks will feel it more than the NASDAQ. And that's what's happening. People are very, very scared about the situation. Now, this really leads us to this. 2023's housing correction could be the largest since post-World War II. And this is a real thing. But there's also some things that's wrong about this. Now, if you go to places like Miami or smaller suburban cities, you generally see home prices actually rising up. Because for once, you could actually get a house or a decently sized luxury condo for $500,000 to $800,000. But if you go to places like San Francisco, well, half a million dollars, 
probably get you like a tent and maybe like a car. That's about it. Like if you look at San Francisco, look through the listings. Can you find a home that's half a million dollars? You can't. I mean, there's something decent, like a one bedroom in a good neighborhood in San Francisco, a thousand square feet. We're really not asking that much. 900 grand. Like seriously, 900 grand in Miami gets you like a three bed, three bath luxury condo with views of the sea. Whereas this, you get view of, I guess, your neighbor's wall. That's about it. And this is why prices in San Francisco will collapse hard in 2023. Now, the collapse has already happened if you look at the commercial real estate sector side. Commercial real estate is also part of the regular real estate sector, and they do affect residential. When commercial drops a lot, which pretty much means high vacancies, and high vacancies means nobody's buying residential. And when nobody's buying residential, prices of properties and rents fall a lot. We recently got a deal of 350 California Street. I love talking about this because it's so incredibly crazy. Sold for $300 million back in 2019. Now it's being sold for a 60 to $68 million, 75 to 80% off. Yeah, a skyscraper in the downtown financial sector of San Francisco, which is actually a very nice place, and they're being sold a whole entire skyscraper from three hundred million to sixty to sixty-eight million dollars. I mean, sixty to sixty-eight million dollars could just get you a regular penthouse in some major cities like you know Dubai, Monaco, Hong Kong. But to buy a whole skyscraper, that's unheard of. And per square feet, it was only sold for 200 to $228 per square feet. That is so low, guys. And San Francisco is actually a major key tech hub for North America. That's insane. Okay, $200 a square foot for the sale. If you look at places like Singapore, if you look at places like you know Hong Kong, you have office properties being sold for... You can't even find any under $1,000 a square feet, and they go up to like $3,000 per square feet in the central business district. But for San Francisco's downtown selling for 200 bucks per square feet, that is pretty bad. And Chicago's even worse, selling at an average of $93 per square feet. And that means housing prices are going to tank next. It's just a matter of when. And like I said before, if there's even whispers of a potential default, even little rumors, it's going to spark a massive decline in price. Oh, by the way, you see this ad here? You see the skyscraper in the middle? That's actually just having a starting bid of $700,000 in, in uh, Chicago. And yeah, it's a whole entire mini skyscraper with a starting bid, the price of a suburban house in Dallas. This is how bad the commercial office space is getting. And this is going to really spill over towards the residential sector. So when you see people saying crash, crash, crash for 2023, be very careful because prices will go down a lot and it's going to be absolutely painful, guys. And before guys leave, definitely check out the private Discord server, guys. Patreon link below for some amazing trades. We trade live every single day. It's $10 a month. You won't find another server cheaper than this with several traders on board. We have like 10 to 15 traders, stocks, cryptos, and options. And one of our traders here, the most popular guy, he made a bunch of money, okay? Last week made like 70% win rates. A lot of the trades are live, and every single week posts the losses and gains. Every single month posts the losses and gains. And look at this. I mean, the NVIDIA call made like 55%. If you held on to it, it would have went up like 100% or more. There's obviously some losses, but a lot of it is a win, so... Definitely trade with us, guys. Make some money with us. It's a pretty awesome server. It's very, very fun to play around with. And see you guys later.